Delighted now to welcome 20 in 10 to Phil De Santos. Phil De Santos is the new boss, obviously, of Valor from last season. Had a great second half of the season as well. Phil, thanks for joining us. Uh, looking forward to previewing your team. Let's get right into it. Give me a number between 1 to 20. Let's start with 7. Number 7. How are you a different coach now than you were a season ago? Oh, a lot more mature, I think. A lot more ready. When you go through adversity, you get more prepared for, I think you get a bit of a shield and a few layers. So I think uh, today uh, I look back at a few things that might irritate me in, in the past. And now I, I handle them a, a little bit better. Uh, I also had a few months as a head coach under my belt. So you learn, you're always learning. So I have no doubt that today uh, I'm a better coach. The off season was a first one for me, the CPL rules, the, uh, all, all the little things that the, the everyday brings that that you just don't learn if you don't want to. Very well said. Okay, next number from you, please. Let's go with three. Number three. Which player has really caught your eye during a bright preseason? Look, you know I'm not the type to single out guys, and I, I just I just feel there's a few guys that came into preseason so so well, so 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 fit. And you look at a guy like Quayle, a guy like. Uh, like Dyer, there's there's a lot. I, I'll even throw this name at you. I was looking at AJB training in, in, in the gym and getting ready for, for what's going to be his next step, and it, it really caught my eye. So uh, there there's quite quite a bunch. You know, Daryl Fordyce for for his age, just man, I want I want his recipe. So the young guys you always expect, but you know, there's some guys you think they just get better with age, and and I don't want to. I don't like to single out guys because I know how, how sometimes other individuals are a bit more sensitive to, to it. But I, I've just been generally pleased with how the, the preseason and how, how the guys came in. I know it's all about the collective, but I'm sure some fans will be happy to hear about those players' names. Uh, next number from you. Let's go with 10. Number 10. How will your team be better this season than last season? Now the team, the games are more structured in terms of having longer between them. Last season was very condensed. I think every team that wants to play a high energy type of game will benefit from that. Uh, the, the, the platform, the foundation we created last year and, and having a chance to uh, come back with a lot of similar faces. Um, and, and when you have more time, in between games, you also have more, more time to work, and that's beneficial for every team. So being able to work on elements that didn't go as well in a game or that you want to grow in your model. So so I think those having a, a proper calendar calendar with games being a bit more spread out, it will benefit the, the sport. And I think that it's going to be good for the fans to more quality in the games, uh, higher paced, more energy. So... Um, I, I'm looking forward to that. Great point about the fans being benefited by this and having the, you know, see the maximum of the players. That's what yeah. they all want, entertainment factor in the end. Okay, next number from you, Phil. Let's go 15. Number 15. When you can step away from soccer, what shows can you watch right now to turn your brain off? What are you watching? I just finished Drive to Survive. I think it's... Uh... It's uh, it's one of those that brought me back to what I I grew up in Montreal until at the age of ten, so we could hear the tracks and everything happening. And um, I was a fan of the time of Jacques Villeneuve when he he was world champion. And now this this uh, series just uh, just got me back at it. I love I love Netflix. I love the game. I tell my staff not to just stay in the game and watch soccer and. I try to find a balance uh, so I don't have the TV on. Now uh, we're, we're blessed with the opportunity to have games on from, I don't know, morning to night. So I also want to find a balance and not be always connected to the game. So I, I do a little bit of everything. I love I love my cartoon time with my kids yeah. also. So, uh, yeah, I... I, I make sure that I'm connected with everything. Great answers. So a lot of people don't understand about my office, Phil. It's half <laughs> soccer, and then the half you don't see is actually racing. I've got tons of racing stuff over awesome. here. Jack Who's Villeneuve, your driver? Who's Jack your Villeneuve driver? stuff over here as well. Nigel Mansell was my driver. Right behind me, there's a painting of Nigel Mansell, the British awesome. Grand Prix in yeah. 1992. Yeah. That's signed well, as well. So. What about now? I, well, I'm more of an IndyCar fan now than F1, oh, okay. just because of access, because of family can get there. My kids love it. Uh, but I like Lando Norris. I do like Lando at F1. He has a it, cockiness you know. to him, huh? But yeah, a, a little bit. But he's, you know, he's, he's English. I mean, I'm Canadian too, but he's got that English f comedy about him. So yeah. I like Lando. He doesn't take himself too too seriously. But uh, it's a great doc. 
documentary and a, and a great choice. Talking Ooh. of F1, they've got some great numbers. Verstappen is number one this year. What, what number do you want next? Did I say one? Not yet. Let me go with one. Let, you you push. That must be a special question. Actually, it's not, but let's go with it. It actually is a good one. I want to hear your thoughts on this. After you finished 2021, what was one area of the pitch or in your team that you felt you needed to improve right away heading into the offseason? I think that we needed to be more consistent defensively. We, uh, we, and, and I'm going to talk collectively, but I feel that there was a lot of individual mistakes that cost us games. Uh, uh, mistakes that at this level you cannot make. So uh, for me, no doubt. And you do that either by personnel changes or you do it by work. And for me this year, you know, the big signing in the back was uh, the return, having the chance to, to have AJB back. So um, we trusted the guys that were in. We made a few changes there, but it was for me in my mind, we needed to get better in the position by both, by trying to move a bit personnel, but also through work and having a proper preseason where you could work with the guys. Andrew Jean-Baptiste, as you mentioned, played just seven games last season and at the time yeah. of his injury was the best defender in the Canadian Premier League, undisputed. Yeah, I heard, I heard and I watched a few games and yeah, he's, he's uh, yeah, he brings leadership. He has uh, a way of going about things on the field that impacts and affects others and the team grows and it's, I gave an example of there's teams that uh, look at DC United when they signed Rooney. The team just grew, and every everyone seemed bigger. And I I think AJB could be one of those players in this league. Yeah, no doubt about it. We're very lucky to have him. A couple more minutes with Phil De Santos. Maybe we we'll get a couple more questions in. Let's go with twenty. Number twenty. What are your thoughts on the Canadian Championship draw for your team? Uh, I'm I I love it. I love it. I think that uh, of course emotionally it goes and gets me and. Uh, I would be lying if I don't I, I don't say that. But I think that sports-wise, it's the most difficult of all six options that were on the table. But I, I see that as an opportunity, and I see it in a way where I, I just want to enjoy the maximum out of a game like that. And uh, my wife, we spoke about it, and I said, you can't speak about that game until... <laughs> the the after the the weekend game leading towards that game because I don't want to think about that too much but it, it's exciting it's exciting to for many reasons so see familiar faces go back to a place that I called home for for a few years and now the opportunity that if you do um, you do make something big happen um, and you you have a, a lot of things going your way then. You know, you you could play, and it it becomes a CPL uh, way to the to a final. So we have to That's see right, that. The half, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have to see that as an opportunity and not be afraid and just enjoy it and and uh, not overthink it because there's five games before that one that we'll have for the CPL. That's going to be every game's going to be very important this year. No doubt. Spoken like a true coach. Take one game at a time. We've got thirty seconds. Let's fit one last one in. Let's go with. 12. Number 12. How would you describe your team's tactical identity and a good in, in under Phil de Santos? I mean, that's tough uh, to get in on 30 seconds, but go yeah, ahead. of course. I want it to be a team that is extremely uh, organized, tactically sound, that doesn't back off, that is always going to play in the front foot, but not, not, um, it has to be rational. We need to understand there's moments of, of, of pressure and references of pressure and be able to read those cues very well. And when we have the ball, we have to be aggressive. We we want to be positive. We want to we want to be extremely aggressive going forward and 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 but but in control. And that's how I I want to resume it in, in in a very quick manner. I want us to be exciting for our fans and um and and I think that you know there's ways of doing that and and still be effective and and still keep a team that is organized and sound and. That will uh, it, that will understand the different moments that the game will bring. Fantastic! A tremendous fast-paced ten minutes before the Santos. It's great to have you in our league. Looking forward to a full season covering you. Uh, all the best pleasure. to you and Vala. Thank you. My pleasure. Have a good one.